2016, this year, is so important in the life of our nation. For all of us who are abroad, you know, we really should not care because our life there is good, but it cannot be. We have to come back and talk to you who live here because 2016 is life and death for our nation. It is that important. So, you know, it doesn't matter that we take time from our family, from our jobs. We have to tell you that you, we, have the power to choose the right path or the wrong path. Now, why am I saying that 2016 is our time to rise? The time of the Philippines to rise. Okay, let me give you a viewpoint from someone who left the Philippines in the 1960s. When we left, when I left, late 1960s, we were only 40 million. Within one generation, Buhay we have more than double. We are 102 million. And half of this are 35 years and under. I know many of us are my age, but this election is going to be decided by those who have not even experienced martial law. So it is very important for us, for those of you who have listened to martial law, that what I say to you should be spread out to the rest of our people. In 1965, our president, Ferdinand Marcos, became president by a wide margin, all right? And for the first time in the history of the Philippines, President Marcos was re-elected in 1969. Again, you know, mystery, history making. The Constitution says only two terms, eight years. And what happened? In 1973, he would have finished his term. But on September 21, 1972, will mark a very big red mark in our history. September 21, 1972, what happened? Martial law. And it's like a blanket of darkness came over the Philippines. Because not only were all freedoms taken away, that young people's lives were taken away, but also a culture of corruption. Zip down, deep roots into our very soul. For 21 years, we got accustomed to corruption. Para bang sabi natin, you're a politician, we expect you to steal, na magnakaw. Para bang nawalan na tayo ng sense of ethics. That was 21 years. Finally, the most important thing happened, na sabi natin, tama na, husto na, in August 21, 1983. Ani ni Noy Aquino was gunned down from the airport. Ni hindi pa siya nakakatungtong. He was gunned down. It took us three years to say, tama na, husto na, people power. February 25, 1986. So, in People Power 1986, Cory Aquino was elected as president. Meaning, meaning to say, nagkaroon ng eleksyon, okay, on the, on the board, parang panalo si Marcos. But in reality, the seven women who were watching the returns, they walked out kasi alam nila yung nakikita nila dito iba sa board. So in effect, Cory Aquino became president. We were so happy. Finally, Marcos out, Cory Aquino in. Uh, Cory Aquino was almost like a saint. But because she didn't have any experience in government, in a way, parang napaligid na siya ng ahas. The army wanted to take her out six coup d'etat under the term of Cory Aquino. So wala masyadong nangyari. Although freedom of the press came back in, but corruption was still down down into our very soul. Pinalitan siya ni Fidel Ramos. Akyat na naman ang Pilipinas. But Fidel Ramos understood six years is not enough. So he instituted Chacha, Charter Change. For those of you who remember, you know, all of us were saying, what? Another six years? Kahit na magaling ka? No. We just had the experience of 21 years of martial law. We don't want too long a person in power. So, walang nangyari sa Chacha, pinalitan siya ni ERA. Diyos ko! So, what happened? The people, meaning to say, civil society, the church, again, army, and finally, the business people said, out with him, EDSA too. Unless si ERA, dating ngayon ang vice president, GMA. GMA, because she was the daughter of Diyos Gagang Makapagal, the honest man from Lubao, we were all happy for her. 
and she started good things. And so when she ran for election in 2010, she won. Okay? Pasok ngayon. Good people in her government. Cesar Purisima and um, Ding Kisoliman and Ding Deles and Butch Abad and Meli Nicolas, my sister. But in July, two years later, nakikita nila corruption. Corruption has not stopped. And it is very close to Malacanang itself. So sabi nila, we are going to quit the Hayat them. Alis sila lahat. So umalis yung good, pasok yung bad. So the rest of President GMA was known for corruption all the way to Washington. So when we were supposed to be given 350 million for the Millennium Funds, they withhold it from GMA. Inintay hanggang sa President Noynoy in 2010 was elected president. And what happened during this all this time? Nasa New York ako, April 2006. Front page ng New York Times. The most corrupt nation, Philippines. Sus, Maria Josep naman, mahiya ako. Okay, and then I would attend uh, international bodies, international uh, meetings, it's their business. And they would say, investment in China, billion, 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 one billion sila, okay yun. Investment in Vietnam, 10 billion. Wow. Vietnam was just free after the Vietnam War, 1975. 10 billion ang investment. Indonesia, 12 billion. All of our Asian countries, ang dami. Philippines, 2 billion lang. Sabi, why? Why are you not investing in the Philippines? Wrong address. <laughs> Wrong address daw tayo? Basically because we were in the top list of the 10 most corrupt nation in the world. That's 2006. I mean, that's all throughout. From 1986 to 2010, we were so in despair, so that in August 1, 2009, Cory Aquino died. And suddenly, from our people, we had this groundwell of support saying, Noi Noi, we want Noi Noi. And that's the time when Maro has stepped down, hearing what the people were saying, Noi Noi Aquino said, all right, this is the start of something new. The culture of corruption had deep roots. You cut off the tree, but there's still deep roots. So, unang unang explanation niya, kung walang korrupt, walang mahirap. With his administration, he wanted to show that there should be no corruption from the top level of government. Kung walang korrupt, walang mahirap. And then you will understand what did that really mean. So, ang unang impeach was the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, Corona. No other country in the world was able to impeach a Chief Justice for corruption, Philippines lang. Medyo naman masayahan ako. Just because I knew it took a lot for a Chief Justice to be impeached. And then, in a way, God helped us. God helped us because who would think that Ben-Hur Chu, the nephew of Janet Napoles, would be in, not in prison, okay? Basta hindi siya pinakawalan ng tatlong buwan sa bahay ni Janet. So when he come out in three months, ano ginawa niya? So, um, Senate. And he started to sing. Ano ang sinabi niya? That Janet Napoles has this wonderful technique, a wonderful project, creating several different not-for-profit and then would talk to senators, 220 million pesos a year for pork barrel or pidaf, and congressmen, 40 million pesos a month, a year for pidaf, that if they want, they can choose several of her not-for-profit, give them, give her the pidaf, she will keep 30%, and 70% goes back to the senator because those not-for-profit were empty. They were ghost. Walang laman. 100% sa bursa. Kung walang corrupt, walang mahirap. Can you imagine that million billions of pesos na pumasok sa coffers ni Janet Napoles? And what happened? I did not believe it could happen. The most powerful three senators of the Philippines 
was arrested and in prison. Wow! Enrile, Estrada, and Revilla. Isn't it? Yes. Okay. Naku, just go. So, with all of that, and then she appointed Tim Enares as BIR. Sino, who, whom did she find, find a case against act, very famous actors, dentists, lawyers, na hindi nagbabayad ng income tax? So, first year pa lamang, wow, lahat tayo, lahat tayo, because we pay income tax in the U.S. They paid income tax, so our revenues rose high. Second year, again high. Nakita yan ng mga international bodies. And therefore, when the president started in 2010, we were bottom third, 134th tayo out of 175 countries. By 2015, we are now 85 in the world. Middle na tayo. We are in the middle. Meaning to say that the Philippines is no longer bottom third. We were out of the 10 most corrupt nation in the world. So, wala na tayo doon. Middle na tayo. By in Transparency International. Next. World Bank says, so umpisa, bottom third di tayo, 144th place. Now, 95, middle na tayo in terms of ease of doing business in the Philippines. Next. World Economic Forum, 85th tayo. Okay? And in 2010, akit natin, 52nd place na tayo. So all of this are happening because President Noy Noy and his cabinet started to show the world we are now transparent. We are now accountable, accountable and we have integrity. So, kita agad yan. Nakita nila from our economic results. And so, finally, in 2014, gave us triple B. Ano ibig sabihin ng triple B? That means to say, we are now reliable. Uutang ang country and we can, they can expect yung nagpapautang sa atin that we will pay it back. Because, kung kayo din, you want to borrow from the bank, kung hindi kayo nagbabayad ng utang, zero, you will, they will not lend you. Okay. If your credit rating is bad, they will not lend you, or if they lend you, ang taas-taas ng interest. So, now, triple B tayo, we are now investment grade. So, ang ating utang from other institutions, when our interest was 9, 8, 9, 10%, 4% na lang. Ang daming savings. Because we have plenty of savings, bayad ng utang. So, babadi ng ating utang. And it's not only S&P. Moody's is also an international rating agency. Triple B din tayo. Finch, another the third. Triple B. So, first time in the history of the Philippines, 117 years, we became investment grade. Nagbabayad tayo ng utang. Palakpak natin naman ng Pilipinas. Let us clap for ourselves. And because of that, our growth since 2010 has been 6%, 7%, 5%, and 3 fourths percent. So we are now considered by Bloomberg, we are in the top 20 economies in the world, and we are second to China if we keep it up. Palakpukan natin ng Filipinas. So for the first time, we are now able, because we have money, hindi na ninanakaw, hindi na nasa bulsa, we have money to invest in two most important things, our people and infrastructure. Unang una, 2010, I don't know about you, but I know, public school here in Manila, you know, during my time, Aurolio, Magsaysay, Rizal, uh, public school. Yes, Arellano. Ang gagaling. But, when I learned that 70 people in one classroom. 80? How can you learn? Yeah. Eh, isang teacher, 80, kumisan, wala pang, wala pang lamesa, nasa, nasa, you know, under the trees. But, in 2016, 180 classrooms have been built so that people in public school who cannot afford to be in private school will have 45 desks, chairs, and a teacher. So, that's one thing. Okay? Na, you know, very, very solid accomplishments. Next. Itong pinaka-importante. Because we are almost more or less here. We are middle class. We don't know about this. This is the four piece. The poorest of the poor. 
Anong ibig sabihin ng poorest of the poor? One day in a week, hindi sila kumakain. That's the poorest of the poor, and we have around 30 million of the poorest of the poor. Because of this CCT, conditional cash transfer. If they don't send their children to school, wala sila niyan. Bunti sila, hindi sila pumupunta sa ospital, wala. Yung asawa nila, kinukuha yung pera para uminom, wala. Okay? Conditional. Hindi lamang darating sa'yo. And so, 4 million, 400,000 of the poorest of the poor are not receiving money. If you are living close to land bank, because in Sorsogon, may land bank, every 15 and every 30th, ang haba-haba ng linya. Why? Because direct sa kanila. Hindi through the congressman, hindi through the uh, barangay captain, para pahingi, pahingi. No, it's directly to them. And that is why, that is why, kung walang korap, walang mahirap, that is a help to them. Sasabihin nyo, aba, hingi na lang ng silingi na sila, o paano naman? You know, will that go on forever? No, it will not. Because now, 400,000 because of this, 400,000 of their children was able to go to uh, graduate in high school. Hindi na patay gruto, at least nakatapos ng high school. Feel health. That the feel health, is only for a select few, only around 62% of the population. <coughs> Ngayon, 90 million ang nakakarisipin ng PhilHealth. I'm sure all of you here who live here have some form of PhilHealth. So you don't have to, ay nako, especially for the poor, ay nako, wala akong pera, you know, ay itay na lang mamatay. So that is also another way that kung walang kurap, walang mahira. Next. Infrastructure. Infrastructure means roads, bridges, airport, hospitals, high school. I must tell you, I visit Sorsogon, where I came from, and where I have a school, at least four times a year. In the previous years, pagdating sa airplano sa Ligaspi, it would take one hour, one hour, 30 minutes. But I was just there in August. Less than an hour, naroon na kami. Why? Because the roads have been widened. And... The bridges na pag umuulan, tanggal, made of cement. And when I went to see the public school, provincial high school, wow, bagong bago. It was burnt two years ago. Normally, you will wait ten years bago matapos. In two years, tapos, pintado ang ganda. And we have a new provincial hospital with 200 beds. And that is only source of one. If you go to the other provinces, you will see roads have been widened. Okay. So, yan lahat nangyayari. And you ask your own province mates. Ganyan din nangyayari sa inyong sariling provinces. Because now, 570 billion pesos are being spent for infrastructure. At wala yung cash yung luan. Ha? <laughs> Babes season of uh, the Department of Public Works, wala yung, oh, ipigyan mo ako ng 30%. No. Okay. Labas sa mga infrastructure. So for the first time, ito na ang expenses sa infrastructure. Pakya. And the Philippines is like an airplane. We are taking off. We are taking off. But we are not yet cruising. That's why I'm saying 2016 is so important. Because the plane may have taken off, but it can go down again. It can fall again. So, anong bedrock ng daang matuwid? What did President Noy Noy tried to do. He tried to impose these three principles. Accountability, transparency, and integrity. Integrity means hindi nagnanakaw. And so, President Noy Noy has studied whatever you say about him, this is his legacy. And because he worked hard on it, he doesn't want it to disappear. So he wants it to continue. He, in a way, he wants a second term. But the Constitution prohibits a second term, di na pwede. So he's choosing his second term. And who is that? That is Marojas. So Marojas is saying, we have the possibility now of really putting the Philippines on the map. Okay? Center of growth, development, and modernity in Asia. We have the chance, 2016. And so President Noy Noy knows that too. That's why he said, my successor will be Marojas. Pinoy chose Mar. Not anybody else but Mar, a worthy successor in the second term of President Noy Noy.
And what is what is the background of Marohas? They believe in bayan muna bago sarili. Because the first president, Manuel Rojas, has a very interesting history, especially referring to Israel. We were the only country that voted for Israel, that moved to majority vote, and Israel became a nation. So, pasalamat na mabuti ng Israel sa atin. Aside from, during the time of Manuel Quezon, we were the only country in the whole world that accepted the Jews that were fleeing Germany. Otherwise, they would have been killed. And because of that, we are the only country in the world that do not need a tourist visa to enter Israel. Palakpo ka naman natin. May puso tayo. May puso ang mga Pilipino. Now, why Mar Rojas? Because Mar graduated from Wharton School of Economics in 1987. Did he come to, to the Philippines? No. He was, he entered investment banking field in New York, Allen and Company. For seven years, he was working there. Ganda ng salary niya, ganda ng apartment niya. But in 1993, what happened? His brother died suddenly. So tawag yung nanay niya, Judy. Mar, you have to come home. You have to continue the work of your brother. Bayan muna bago sarili. Iniwan niya yung magandang apartment niya sa New York. Very good job because I spoke to the partner of Allen and Company. And he said, we were sorry to lose him. He was a very good man. So, balik siya to continue the term of his brother. 1993, 2000. And then he became the DTI of President Era. And you know, you can see it on YouTube, President Era had said, of all his cabinet secretaries, the best was Marojas. All right. And under GMA, he was also DTO. What did he do during the time of GMA? And then under Aquino, he was transportation, communication, and then local government. But I have to tell you, in those 22 years that we was here, there has not been a whisper or a suggestion or a rumor that Tunisia na kasunduan or Tunisia na commission. No, nothing, no element, not even a whisper that he was corrupt. Because within his own conviction, he has integrity, he has honesty, and wala sa guni-guni niya ang magnaka. Why? It is so easy to steal money when you are in government, when you have power. And dali, dali! But in 22 years of Marojas, you will hear from nobody that he stole anything. You don't know, but when he started it in 2001, there were only 5,000 uh, employees. But now, 1 million Filipinos, young people, are in the VP of business. Call center, legal research, accounting, bathroom. 1 million who otherwise would have maybe gone abroad or working at SM for six months. And one million, and how much money in revenue is that? That is last year, $23 billion of Homopasso sa Filipinas. And this is the most important. He started it, but he told his family, Araneta, Rojas, we will not invest in any call center, any BPO, because I don't want people to know I started this for my own benefit. That is the kind of integrity he has. And right now, SM, PLDT, lahat ng mga major companies meron call center because it's such a money making, but not the Araneta and not the Rojas. Okay? You know, when I hear people say, ah, eh, this dyan, mayaman, walang puso para sa Manila. Look at all of the things he has done that benefits the people. Sino sa lahat ng aking mga government official ang lumabas sa mga pharmaceuticals? They are so powerful. In fact, the they told the American Embassy, please try to speak to Marojas, kinakalaban kami. And they did. The American Embassy called him. And he said, look, the pharmaceuticals are making so much money. Wala magbabaan nila because diabetes, heart, heart um, ailment, blood pressure, and uh, cancer. You know, that should be available to people. And he did. Okay, so, the, he may have been born rich. 
but he knew, he knows how to make things done for the people. We are all giving a scholarship to anybody. So if anybody tells you, and it is, uh, it's a lie, you know, that people have been doing, alam niya kung sino, character assassination of Mar, and that is not true. Because when you say, elitista ka wala kang ano sa puso, that's not true for all of us. We are a people of compassion, and that goes also for Mar. When he was local government, he was shocked that the report of crime is 900 a day here in Metro Manila. And so what did he do? He called all the stakeholders, uh, police, BNP, mga, you know, in the church. Let us study what's, what are the facts. Nakita nila that the crime is highest in certain parts of Metro Manila. So ilan, how many policemen are on those places? The same as in other places. Wow, sabi yan. Logic. The crime is over here. Let's put more policemen there. And then, ano ang kanilang mga defense? Patunta lang. What happened to, to, to uh, arms? Only if they can afford it. Sila pa ang nagagastos ng baril para meron silang baril. So what did he do? He ordered, okay, for all the policemen, guns. So now, from 900 crimes a day, it's down to 300 crimes a day. Crime for end, but at least 500 people have been saved. So that's the kind of sasabihin nyo, at least wala sa puso sa mga mahirap. No, he is a worker, he is a solution maker. Isa pa, he is the only congressman or senator who passed a law that if you are earning minimum wage of 250 a day, bakit ka pa tax So no income tax. You ask your people, you know, they're receiving only 250 pesos a day. Walang income tax yun. That is 700,000 people who are who are not paying income tax. Tulong din sa tao. 